Halo guys, di video kali ini gue mau jelasin aircraft system, aircraft sistemnya flight control buat pesawat Cessna ya 172 nih. Kita lihat dari YouTube aja guys. Mari kita nonton bersama nah, sambil kita bahas-bahas bareng ya. Services around the Jadi mulai, jadi mulai. The flight controls consist of various services around the aircraft that manipulate the aerodynamic forces on the plane. Jadi flight controls nih ada di sekitar aircraft nih ada 1 2 eh 1 2 3 4 ini 5 ya ini ya. Jadi aileron 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 ada rudder di sini ada apa lupa gua. Allowing the pilot to control the aircraft. Aircraft flight controls are broken into two systems primary and secondary flight control. Jadi ada dua dibagi dua, primary flight controls yang ini nih 1 2 3 4 5 sama secondary ya ini flap sama trim ini. Secondary flight controls ya. Primary flight controls are simply those flight controls that the pilot primarily uses to control the airplane. The three primary flight controls are the ailerons, elevator and rudder. Jadi primary flight controls-nya Aileron, rudder, sama primary flight controls are the ailerons, elevator, elevator, gue lupa bisa lupa, aileron, elevator, sama rudder ya itu primary flight and controls. And rudder. Nah. Secondary flight controls, on the other hand, are used to change the airplane's performance and lighten the pilot's workload. The two secondary flight controls that we'll discuss are the flaps and trim. Jadi secondary flight control itu ada flaps sama the two trim. Secondary Secondary flight control itu flap sama trim buat mempermudah penerbangannya pesawat ya. Flight controls that we'll discuss are the flaps and trim. The pilot controls the ailerons and elevator with a yoke or stick. Jadinya untuk kontrol aileronnya pakai yoke atau stick. And the rudder with the rudder pedals. Rudder pakai rudder pedal ya yang di kaki ya. In most general aviation airplanes, as the pilot moves the controls, he or she is moving steel cables or push rods connected through other linkages that physically move these controls. Jadinya itu controller itu yang uh, yoke atau rudder itu connect-nya ke ka pakai kabel ya, dia connect ke aileron nama elevator di belakang sama rudder ya, dia connect-nya kayak pakai kabel gitu. As the control surface is deflected, the airflow is changed, which results in an aerodynamic force changing the airplane's path through the air. Let's investigate the three primary flight controls in more detail. Jadinya elevator itu pas berubah, dia bisa naik turun, dia ngerubah airflow di belakang sini ya. Jadi dia bisa naik, bisa pitch up, pitch down. The ailerons are located on the back end of the wings out towards the tip and control the aircraft's roll or bank. Jadi aileron itu di sini kiri kanan. Dia ngontrol roll atau bank ya. Jadi pesawatnya bisa roll, oke. Okay? When the pilot moves the controls to the left, the left aileron is deflected up, creating a downward force. Jadi kalau di yoke-nya diputar ke kiri, aileron yang kirinya naik jadinya ada udara yang downward force terus pesawatnya rolling ke kiri. And the right aileron is deflected down, creating an upward force. Tuh, kalau setir ke kiri yang ininya ke bawah, yang kanan aileron jadinya ada upward force. Jadinya ini ke bawah, ininya ke atas terus dia putar ke kiri jadinya. This results in the airplane rolling to the left. Nah, menyebabkan pesawatnya rolling ke kiri. The opposite would happen if the pilot were to move the controls to the right. Nah, kalau di ke kananin dia jadinya gerakannya berlawanan ininya ke atas ininya ke bawah jadinya dia ini ada down uh, force ke bawah ini ada force ke atas jadi dia muter nih cus ke kanan The elevator is attached to the back of the horizontal stabilizer and controls the airplane's pitch Nah uh, elevator nih dia attach ke horizontal stabilizer dia ngontrol pitch-nya ya jadi pesawatnya bisa Pitch up, pitch down. Which allows the airplane to climb or descend. Kegunaannya untuk climb dan descend, untuk uh, terbang ke atas atau terbang ke bawah ya. When the pilot moves the controls forward or aft, the elevator rotates, deflecting the air and creating a force that results in the airplane's pitch changing. Jadi kalau yoke-nya di ke belakang ke depanin ininya maju naik turun ya, yang menyebabkan pesawatnya bisa pitch up atau pitch down. 
If the pilot pulls back on the controls, the elevator will move up, creating a force that pushes the tail of the airplane down. Nah, ini ketika yoknya ditarik ke belakang, elevatornya ke atas dia, menyebabkan pitch up pesawatnya ya, karena ada force dari atas ini. Thereby making the nose pitch up and causing the airplane to start climbing. Nah, karena dia pitch up, jadi pesawatnya bisa climbing. Finally, the rudder, which is controlled by the rudder pedals, is attached to the back end of the vertical stabilizer. Nah, jadinya rudder ini, rudder, dia connect ke rudder pedal, okay? As the pilot pushes on one of the rudder pedals, a cable connected to the rudder allows the rudder to move. Nah, jadi kalau diinjek-injek ini, dia connect ke, ke, ke pakai kabel ini, dia bikin rudder bisa gerak ke kanan atau kiri. Just like the other flight controls, as air moves around the deflected rudder, a force is applied, making the airplane yaw. Nah, kegunaannya rudder untuk yaw ya, jadinya kalau diinjak ke kanan, ininya berubah ke kanan, ini ada airplane-nya deflect, jadi pesawatnya yaw ke kanan. Simply, if the pilot pushes the left rudder pedal, the nose of the airplane will slide to the left. Nah, ini kalau diinjak ke kiri, ininya belok kiri, jadinya dia yaw ke kiri. The easiest way to envision this is to think of an airplane suspended on a string above the ground. If you and your friends were to walk up to the rudder and push as hard as you could towards the right, what do you think would happen? Nah, ini cuma contoh ya. Bayangin aja ini ada kabel, terus bayangin lu dorong ke sini, jadi pesawatnya nanti nengok ke kiri ya. Prinsipalnya, basic prinsipalnya gitu. The tail of the airplane would move to the right, nah, ya. and the nose would move to the left. It's that simple. We use the rudder in coordination with the ailerons to turn the airplane. Jadinya untuk membelokan pesawat kita harus koordinasi aileron sama rudder ya, biar balance. The primary flight controls then fundamentally work the same. The pilot moves a control in the cockpit, which through cables and other linkages moves that control. As that control is moved, the airflow around it gets deflected, creating a force and results in the airplane either rolling, pitching, or yawing. Nah, jadinya pesawat tuh deflect uh, itu ya airflow ya. Jadi kalau kita pakai flight controls yang mana nanti dia bisa pitch, bisa roll, bisa yaw ya, tergantung flight control mana yang kita pakai. In order to help improve the performance of the airplane and make the pilot's job easier, most general aviation airplanes are equipped with flaps and trim. Nah, ini secondary flight control, flaps sama trim supaya penerbangan menjadi lebih mudah ya. Known as secondary flight controls. Let's examine these further. Okay, ini secondary flight control, kita mau lihat flaps. The flaps are located on the back side of the wing. Nah, dia flaps itu posisinya di back side of the wing ya. Dia turun gitu ya, bisa turunin flaps. Close to the fuselage. They are primarily used to help increase lift during takeoff and landing. Nah, kegunaannya ini supaya kita bisa increase lift pas kita take off atau landing. The pilot controls the flaps by moving a lever in the airplane which either electrically moves the flaps by a motor like on the Cessna 1. Oke, jadinya cara mengoperasikannya pakai lever tadi ya. In the airplane. Dia, dia itu elektrik ya, dikebawain nanti itunya turun. Which either electrically moves the flaps by a motor like on the Cessna 172. Oh. Tuh, jadi turun pas dikebawain. Or the pilot manually moves the flaps using a lever, like on the Piper Aero. Nah, ini flapsnya manual ya. Gue nggak pernah pakai ini ya. Dulu flying school gue pakai Cessna. Elektrik ini ada juga manual ya, mechanical. In either case, as the pilot extends the flaps, the shape of the wing changes, which increases lift. Jadinya pas flapsnya di extend, bentuk wingnya berubah shape-nya. Jadi kita punya more lift karena wing surface areanya membesar ya. This allows the airplane to fly at slower air speeds and make steeper approaches to landing. Jadinya kita punya more lift, kita bisa terbang dengan air speed yang lebih rendah. Jadi kita bisa landing dengan lebih steep ya. Jadinya kita bisa lebih jarak yang kita perlukan untuk landing lebih dikit. This is extremely beneficial during takeoff from a short runway because it allows the airplane to take off at a slower speed. Meaning, it will use less runway. Nah, yang kiri ini take off-nya pakai flaps, yang kanan nggak pakai flaps. Seperti kita lihat, yang kiri pakai flaps, take off speed-nya 48 knot, jarak runway-nya yang ditempuh 758 kaki. Yang kanan nggak pakai flaps, take off speed-nya 55 knot, tapi perlu runway lebih panjang, 300 feet dari yang kiri ya, kira-kira. 
During landing, the pilot uses flaps to allow the airplane to land at a slower airspeed. Nah, kalau pakai flat landing supaya kita bisa airspeednya lebih rendah. Using less distance to decelerate and stop. Terus kita juga distancenya lebih pendek supaya bisa lebih mendaratnya nggak perlu runway panjang-panjang. Yang kiri lihat tuh pakai flaps segini, yang kanan nggak pakai flaps segini ya. The other secondary flight control that we'll discuss is trim. Nah, sekarang kita discuss trim dia ada di elevator belakang sini. The trim is used to make the pilot's job easier and allows the airplane to essentially fly itself with fewer control inputs by the pilot. Jadi guna trim supaya pesawatnya bisa terbang sendiri tanpa kita kasih input ya itu kegunaan trim ya. Nih, pilot workload without trim lebih banyak daripada with trim ya, enggak pakai trim lebih banyak daripada pakai trim. The Cessna 172, like most training airplanes, has two trims. One that the pilot can directly control through cables on the elevator, and the other a ground adjustable tab on the rudder. Jadinya ada dua ya trimnya ini yang bisa dikontrol. Waktu gua flying school ada di tengah, dia nyambung ke kabel juga bisa naikin turunin. Cables on the elevator, and the other a ground adjustable tab. Nah, yang ini trimnya ini di ground ya, adjustnya di ground. On the rudder. Di the elevator trim is typically controlled through a wheel inside the cockpit. Nah, seperti gue bilang tadi, nih, nih dulu gue tri pitch trimnya, trimnya pakai ini nih. Apa namanya dikontrolnya supaya pesawatnya balance ya, kita nggak perlu naikin turun dan naik turunin biar pesawatnya terbang sendiri. Is labeled nose down or nose up. Terus lihat nih di sini nih ada take off nih. Jadi kalau take off, ininya harus taruh sini biar dia balance ya, biar nggak menunggak ke belakang atau susah ditarik. As the pilot moves this wheel, the cables will adjust the elevator trim tab, which is located on the aft or back end of the elevator. Nah, dia posisinya tuh kalau diturunin dia bakal naik, dia posisi di elevator gini, ini ada kabelnya nyambung ya. Usually during takeoff, the trim tab is in its neutral position. Jadi kalau takeoff di neutral position ya di tengah sini ya. Which means it is just about flush with the elevator. Nah, dia berarti dia sejajar sama elevator ya, seperti ini. As the pilot climbs, however, he or she may trim the airplane to help relieve control pressure and prevent pilot fatigue. Nah, kalau lagi climbing, diturunin supaya ininya ke atas dan lebih gampang ditariknya. Jadi kita nggak perlu banyak tenak otot ya, nggak perlu pakai otot, pakai jari aja mesti bisa. If he or she wants to climb at a specific airspeed, then the trim can be adjusted to maintain that airspeed. Nah, untuk uh, ngikutin airspeednya, di adjust ininya supaya kita bisa maintain airspeednya, oke? Okay? The rudder has a ground adjustable trim tab. That simply means that it can only be adjusted while on the ground. Nah, kalau yang ground ini, ground, tri, ground adjustable trim ini cuma bisa di adjust di ground ya, di rudder. As the pilot has to manually move it. Nah, pilot mesti manual nih uh, gerakinnya. The rudder's ground adjustable tab helps the pilot during climb because of the left turning tendencies that the plane has while climbing. Nah, dia tuh ngebantu supayanya pesawatnya nggak belok kiri karena pesawat kalau climbing kan ininya nih muternya kenceng nih. Jadi dia ada tendensi turn left. Jadi dengan ini dia uh, neutralize uh, turning left itunya ya. We'll talk more about those turning tendencies in a future lesson. It is obvious that the flight controls are a necessity for the pilot to fly the airplane. Jadi flight control itu benar-benar diperlukan untuk mengendalikan pesawat ya. The pilot manipulates these flight controls in order to achieve the desired performance out of the airplane. Jadinya kita perlu memanipulasi flight control ini supaya kita bisa uh, mendapatkan gerakan pesawat yang kita mau. Now that we have a basic understanding of the components of the airplane and how the pilot controls different surfaces, let's go under the hood of the airplane and investigate the power plant. Okay, next video di sini dia bilang mau bahas power plantnya atau mesinnya. Okay, guys, begitulah video untuk flight controls. Kalau like jangan lupa subscribe, share, komen-komen yang banyak. Okay, biar gue makin semangat bikin videonya ya. Terima kasih guys.